All right, so today I want to talk about Vim again, and that's thanks to a comment I got on my video yesterday. So I had my Vim Jippity video yesterday where you could look up commands right inside of Vim, and someone aptly replied that they think that that's an interesting way to do it, but they think they have a better way, which is to use something called Wilder, which is a plugin to Vim. And so in the process of exploring this plugin, I find myself really liking it. And so I thought, hey, let me throw together a quick video about this, show you how to set it up, let you see what it does and see if it's something you wanna to add to your own Vim environment. If you're having trouble looking up commands or searching for content or matching on file paths, this is an incredibly valuable tool. All right, so first up, I've got Vim over here and I don't have anything enabled for this plugin. First, what I wanna do quickly, I wanna enable a feature called set and wild menu. When I do this, then when I'm in the command mode down below and I hit W and hit tab, you can see I get a little menu of choices that I can tab through to complete a command like WQ, and then I can run that command. And then the next time, if I wanna look up something else, I could do E and I could hit tab here. In this case, it expands out to earlier, maybe ED, and that expands to edit. And the second time I come in here, notice that I've got the completions, but not the menu. And that's because if I want the menu again, I have to re-enable it. It's not enabled in my config by default. So once I do that now, if I hit E and hit tab here, you can see I've got the menu back and it's a horizontal menu. It's easy to step through the options, but it might be nice if this were displayed in a more pop-up fashion. And it actually turns out you can do that if you set another option called set and wild options. Set that equal to an PUM. I have no idea why it's PUM. Maybe pop up menu. Once I do that, now if I do command mode W and tab, you can see I get a menu, albeit my color palette here is terrible. That's probably my fault. I probably have some configuration of colors that's just off. Maybe one more thing I wanna show here before we move on to Wilder. If I hit the forward slash key to search for something in my file here, if I hit tab while I'm looking at this, it doesn't pop up any sort of menu. Keep that in mind here because once I enable Wilder, I'm gonna show you some more features that has beyond just command completion, and that includes searching through your document. All right, so to enable Wilder, I'm actually going to revert my last commit here where I commented everything out. I'll revert that. I'll quit out of Vim here and reload it, which will enable Wilder. And so now, watching command mode down below, when I put in the colon, you can see here, I have a history of commands that I could step through. So this is one feature that's added and that is all your recent commands are available. So you can tab through those. Or if you put in a character like W and hit tab here, you can see once you start typing, just like before, you can tab through the various items, except now it's displayed in that pop-up menu by default. And with my configuration, not only can I hit W and hit tab here, if I wanted to look for something with a W and a T in it, I could put both of those in. And if you look at how the matches are happening down below, you can see the accent color is a whitish color there or a gray. And so that indicates that that was a fuzzy match on that particular command. So that's another feature this adds over the basic wild menu. So that's one thing about the Wilder plugin. Another thing I like here, if you recall, I mentioned when you're searching through your document with a forward slash here, if I want to search for something like my, take a look, I've got a little menu here that I can tab through with words that are inside of my document. So I could look for this, for example, my Wilder pop-up menu, hit return here. And now I've got a traditional search that takes me through instances of that particular word. So that way, if I want to search for something in my document, forward slash fu, and I could do zz, and I could match them on fuzzy, and I don't have to actually type out the entire word. I can also use fuzzy matches here. So for example, I have a variable called dot files directory. If I do dd, capital dd, or if I do little d, little d, I can still match on this. And you can see I can tab through the results then of this fuzzy match, and that takes me down to then the first instance of dot files directory. And of course, that's right inside of my document. So this is a really nice feature to have to be able to fuzzy search where you don't have to type out exactly the word you're looking for. You can just type out some of the prominent letters in that word, and it'll search through everything inside of your document. Incredibly powerful. All right, and maybe one more feature here. If I'm typing out a command like to open up a file here, you can see I get completions of the file names. And of course, you have that inside of the stock completions within Vim as well. But in this case, I get a nice menu of those. And if I do something like asterisk asterisk to match on a pattern, give this a second here. Now this is a little bit slow by default because I don't have any of the optimization set up to search for files faster. Nonetheless, you can see the pop-up comes up and I can then just tab through matching files 
inside of my project here so I don't have to actually put in the entire path to open up a file. For example, I think I've got a file called install.fish. There you go. I can tab through. Maybe I can find it somewhere in here. Nope, looks like I messed that one up. Let me try install asterisk. There we go, install.fish. I can match on that really easily and open that file up to edit it, which makes it a really nice way to open up files in Vim, which really is one of my gripes when it comes to a stock Vim configuration. It's kind of a pain to be able to open up files, or at least it's a pain for somebody like me that's a noob at doing it. And so I tend to prefer the command line then as a way to find the files and then open them with Vim. I find that to be a hassle then. And so typically I don't work with multiple files in Vim. However, with this feature and with the Wilder menu, I really like that. I think it'll make it a lot more usable for me to be able to just switch between files within Vim. So I don't feel tempted to go open up VS Code instead. All right, so as a last step here, I'm gonna come back to my VimRC file. I should have opened that up with the command palette, falling back into my terrible routine here. All right, so inside of this file, I just wanna step through some of the configuration that I have in case you're wanting to set this up in your own environment. Let's just talk about plugins. So we'll do that first. So I'll look for a plugin here, jump down below. Okay, so there are a couple of plugins that I set up for my configuration. The first one you're going to need here is this wilder.mvim. Look at me, I'm using the mouse to select stuff in here. I also have this vim dev icons. And that was just so that when I'm editing a command here and I'm typing in a file name, you can see on the readme here, there's a little arrow. I'm not certain why that means markdown, but it does. Or down under requirements, you can see the little lines or I've got the folder icon. So that package or that plugin is what you need to be able to add those icons as well as some configuration you'll see down below. And then because I'm using stock Vim and I'm not using NeoVim, there are a couple of more plugins that I need to add to be able to support some of the advanced features of Wilder that relies on Python for fuzzy matching. So some of the stock Wilder configuration doesn't require this, but when you get into advanced configurations, you'll need these two plugins as well. And then when I was troubleshooting, there are a couple of environment variables I could set to troubleshoot. I also left some comments behind about some trouble I had with my Python environment and getting this to detect the right environment where I installed the package that's needed. I needed this pyNvim package or NeoVim, and I tried using a virtual environment and just didn't have luck with it actually using the virtual environment. So I left some comments about what I did. I ended up just forcing an install into my user site, which is not the best thing to do, but it works. All right, so those are the plugins you need. Of course, when you do that, you're gonna to wanna to do a plugin. Isn't this nice? Plugin install, I can complete just like that with a fuzzy match. Make sure you run your plugin install to have those added. Oops, I'll just exit out of here. And then I'm gonna step down below. I think I need to jump down to where I said Wilder. Yeah, there you go. So first up, I set up Wilder to work inside of the colon slash, and then also question mark, which is a backward search. So it works in all of these contexts. All right, so next up, I set an option here for controlling the pipeline. The pipeline is how you configure the matches that you're going to get. And the very first part of this is a branch. So this is a multi-stage pipeline, if you will, where first off, if I haven't put anything in, so I'm in command mode and nothing has matched yet, then I'm showing my history of commands that I've run. And then once I type something in like a character, now I'm gonna skip over that because I'm no longer empty. So let me show you this here. You can see it right here. Oh, that's terrible highlight. I need to fix my highlighting colors in Vim here. All right, so for the first step here, I check if it's empty, if it's an empty prompt, and if so, then I use the history, and then I control how this is displayed to add the little calendar icon to indicate history. So when I do a colon here, you can see the little history to indicate a calendar icon. So if it's not empty, then this will be skipped over and I'll move down to the next pipeline, which is this command line pipeline. And so that's for completing commands where I can do a W, and I have all the commands that are available, much like the stock wild menu inside of Vim. And then I've also configured this to use Python and fuzzy matching. That way I can do things like W and T, and I can match on the start and the last character of a command. If I didn't have fuzzy, for example, if I replace this with a zero here, save that, reload the file. Now, when I type in a command, if I do WT here, you can see nothing matches. And that's because in this case, WT will require the command to have WT in it. So I put that back to a one. Reload that. All right, so if I don't find my matches there, basically if I'm inside of the... All right, so to be honest here, I don't recall why I added this part of the pipeline. I'm wondering if that has to do with file matches. 
Let me come down below here and see if there's any other indications. If there's anything else. No, okay, so that must have to do with file matches, I believe. So let me do this here. I'm gonna get rid of these four lines, actually five lines. I'm gonna save that. Before I reload it though, if I do a file match here, DD. Okay, so that matches my dot files dir. Now, if I reload things here. Yeah, okay, there you go. If I do a slash DD here, you can see that doesn't match anything. So those last five lines here, if I undo and bring them back here, these have to do with searching for words in a document like DD. Let me bring this back here. So now I can search on, in this case, instances of a word inside the document, like dot files dir. Next up, I created some customizations for the color. So when I'm completing here, I get a nice green. And if I tab through the results, red is the currently selected item. You can, of course, tweak that to your liking. All right, and so down here is where I wire that all up. So I call Wilder set option. This is for the renderer, basic highlighter. And then here I map in the custom highlighting I defined up above. And then also I set things up here. So on the left side, I'm using the dev icons. If you recall when I have matches here, E and then I've got files here. So I believe this is where I wire up to get those file icons to show. Let's just try it out actually. Let's get rid of these three for left, save that. Let's resource that. And let's see if I got that right or not. Yeah, you can see the icons are gone now. So that's how you wire up. If I undo that, bring that back here, save that, reload that. That's how you can wire up the icons to show here. So you can get those nice icons next to each file. So that's part of formatting the results, if you will. And then on the right-hand side, I don't know why I left this behind. I really haven't figured out how to use the scroll bar yet. I suppose if I just tab through the items here, it'll move down. Okay, yeah, it's moving down. Basically the right side here, I'm just adding the scroll bar too. Definitely not critical. And so that is, that's about it. I have some other sample configurations in here with notes. I am not going to proclaim that this is some awesome VimRC file. As I think I've said in the past, I'm a big fan of using Vim, but I do so typically inside of other tools like Visual Studio Code. I've got the Vim mode plugin set up. So I'm not used to using Vim solely at the command line. And so definitely my VimRC is old. I haven't configured this in a while and it's got a lot of vestigial crap that I probably need to rip out. And then if you want this as a reference, of course, it's going to be out in my dot files directory. So check that out on GitHub. And then you let me know, what do you think of this plugin? Is this commoner correct in that this is a better way to approach things? Or perhaps is Vim Jippity the better way? So for example, if I want to learn how to do something, instead of typing a letter to look it up, I might do something like save and quit. This is my Vim Jippity I showed off yesterday. Control B here goes out and looks up WQ for you. So is Vim Jippity something you prefer or is Wilder something you prefer? Or are you like me and thinking, oh, it might actually be nice to have both of these.